you actually already know about conditional probability, you just don't realise you do, and what makes it difficult is this funny notation. But think about a tree diagram, okay? What do we put along here? We put the probability of A. Now, what's the difference between what goes here and what goes here, given that they're both going to B? Well, down here, we've got the probability of not A. So when we look at this B, we're saying that this number here is the probability of B, but so is this, this is the probability of B as well. But this branch is the probability of B given that A has happened. Whereas this branch is the probability of B given that not A has happened. And the notation that we use looks like this, a vertical line. So this one is the probability of B given A, and this one is the probability of B given not A. And then down here, we would put the probability of not B given A, and here we'd put the probability of not B given not A. What happens when we land here? What do we actually get there? Well, A has happened and B has happened, so this would be the probability of A and B. If you times them together, look at this formula here. What does it say? The probability of A and B is the probability of A given B times the probability of B. The probability of A given B... Oh, they're the other way around, but it's that branch, basically, following it round. This one, this is the probability of A and not B. This one is the probability of not A and B. And this one is the probability of not A and not B. So that times that is that, that times that is that, that times that is that, that times that is that. You already know this from tree diagrams, you just haven't seen this notation before. So this is what it looks like, it's got a vertical line. The thing at the front is the thing you're asking about the probability. So this is the probability of A, given that B has happened. And the formula that you need to use is the intersection divided by the probability of the thing that's happened. That's the formula that you use. If you rearrange it by putting the probability of B up there, you get this, which matches what you understand already from a tree diagram. Now, there are two types of events you need to be aware of, and one of them is linked to this and one of them isn't. Mutually exclusive events are nothing to do with independence. Mutually exclusive events cannot both happen. You can see it on a Venn diagram because they can't intersect, or the intersection is zero. So mutually exclusive cannot both be either you're that or you're that. You can't be both of them. The way that we would write that using notation is like this. The intersection is naught. There is no crossover. Whereas independent events, this is invisible on a Venn diagram. So I've got no idea whether R and S are independent. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Maybe R and T are independent. I don't know. There's no way. I can't just look at that and go, oh, they are. So the independence is something we have to check. And the independence is to do with this formula here and this, well, they're the same, for conditional probability. Because what does it literally, what does it mean to be independent? If you think logically, it means that the probability of A given that B has happened is the same as the probability of A. So it would be on a tree diagram. It would be, oh, what's the probability of B? What's this number? given that we've come down this branch versus what's that probability there, given that we've come down this branch. Now, if B has got nothing to do with A, then it doesn't matter whether you've come down this branch or this branch, that number there will be identical to this number here. So independent events, probability of A given B is the same as probability of A. You could also think of it like this, probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A given not B, because A doesn't care whether or not B happened. And you can also write it like this, the probability of A and B is the probabilities times together. Now that is what you use all the time without even thinking this and this is this times this. That's only true this and this is this probability times this probability. That's only true if the events are independent. Otherwise, it is not true. So this is what we use as a test for independence. So summary again, the notation A vertical line B means what is the chance that A happens given that B is definitely happening, B has happened. This is the formula you use, which rearranged looks like that. There are two types of events you need to know the name of, mutually exclusive, don't overlap, can't both happen, intersection is naught. Independent, don't have anything to do with each other, don't affect each other, don't make the other one more or less likely, intersection is product. Let's have a go at this question. Which events are mutually exclusive? 
Well, R and S overlap. So the probability of R and S is 0.05. So they're not mutually exclusive. If they were mutually exclusive, we'd have a probability of zero. What about R and T? What is the probability of R and T? Zero. R and T do not overlap at all. They cannot both happen. You can't be in the R circle and in the T circle. So they are mutually exclusive. What about these two, S and T? Well, the probability of S and T is 0.11. They're not mutually exclusive. Okay, it's going to be a little bit harder to check independence, but we can still do it. This is what we're going to use to check independence. So we're going to do the probability of R and S, and we're going to compare that with the probability of R times the probability of S. Now, a very common mistake here to point out is if you don't have probability, you know sometimes in a Venn diagram you have numbers like 4, 6, 10, like this one. What students will sometimes do is forget that they need that divisor underneath. So the probability of A is not 10. It can't be 10 because the highest of probability can be is 1. So this is a common mistake. Just have it in your head. If they don't give you probabilities, if they give you actual values, put over 14, over 14, over 14 on all of them so that you're using probabilities. Right, so this is going to check R and S. Probability of R and S is this middle bit here. Probability of R times the probability of S. Well, this is R and this is S. All of this together is S. So that adds up to 0 0.2. And 0 0.25 times 0 0.2 is, I believe, the same. Yay! So these are the same. If they're the same, that means that the events are independent. You can remember it maybe the other way around. Different, dependent. Different, dependent. Same, independent. So R and S events are independent. Right, let's try another one. Let's try R and T. So the probability of R and T is zero. The probability of R times the probability of T is obviously not going to be zero, but I'll write it down anyway just in case the examiner wants to see that I know what the probability of t is, and that is not equal to zero, then they're different. So r and t are dependent. One of them affects the other one. If t happens, it means that r is or is not likely to happen. And the reason for that is that they're mutually exclusive. If t happens, I know for a fact r can't happen, so that's the end of that. So they are dependent. What about s and t? Okay, the intersection is 0.11. The probability of S times the probability of T is equal to, well, the probability of S is 0.2. The probability of T is 0.46. And really show the examiner what this calculation is that you've done so that they can see that you really do know what you're doing. They are not the same, different, so dependent. Okay, that's how simple it is. So. R and S don't affect each other. If R happens, S is just as likely to happen as if R didn't happen. Whereas these, RT and ST, are dependent on each other. Okay, find the probability of R given S. Apply this formula. Probability of R given S is the probability of R and S over the probability of S. Now the probability of R and S is that middle bit there. And the probability of S is this whole thing here. And I can't do numbers. Um, I mean, I probably could think about this, but I don't want to make a mistake. 0 0.25. And then this one, which looks horribly complicated, but look, it's not going to be R given S and not T. The probability of R given S and not T is the probability of R and S and not T divided by the probability of the thing that's happened, S and not T. Right, on the Venn diagram, we want to find where there's R and as well S and as well not T. So here's R, here's S. So for a start, I'm going to be restricted to this because I've got to be in R and as well in S. And then and as well, I'm not allowed to be in T. Well, that's fine. This isn't in T. So this bit here, this is the only part of the Venn diagram 
which is in R and S and not T, divided by the probability of S and not T, S and not T. So here's S, that bit, that bit, that bit. The only bits of S that are not in T are this bit and this bit, which add up to 0 0.09. So that is, I mean, I could leave it as a, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write that because that's not exact. I'm going to write it as 5 over 9. And that's more or less all there is to it.